crispy, golden, slightly sweet bizcochos de raqui, Sephardic Turkish anise cookies infused with the flavor of delicious Turkish raqui, a yummy alcoholic drink that is infused with anise. And of course, some anise seeds are added for extra flavor. The delicious flavor of raqui and those yummy semillitas de anise in some bizcochitos. Yum. Sally that girl in the kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to make bizcochos de raqui, Sephardic Turkish anise cookies. These cookies are absolutely amazing. So if you are familiar with my Sephardic Turkish bizcocho, well these are just a little bit different because we're going to make these extra special by adding an alcoholic drink from Turkey called raki, which is twice distilled. And the second time it gets distilled, they add anise seeds into it. And it just makes this incredible, delicious floral flavor. And I'm also gonna be adding some anise seeds or anise into the mix of the dough. So you're gonna get a double kick. You're gonna get a kick from the anise flavored alcohol and you're going to get a little kick from that extra anise that I'm going to be adding into the dough. They're super tasty, smell amazing, and just the perfect little cookie to be served with anything. A cup of tea, some coffee for some guests, even at breakfast, pretty much any time. They are super, super yummy. And we're going to be using a traditional Turkish drink. If you're not familiar with raki, it is similar to ouzo, which is Greek, or to arak, which is made in Israel, and it is absolutely delicious. And if I understand it correctly, it's even stronger. So don't worry, we're only gonna be using a touch of it in our dough, and we are also gonna be adding those anise seeds into the dough to give it extra flavor. It's gonna be super yummy. So I'm super excited to teach you how to make this. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need three cups plus one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of anise seeds, three large eggs plus one more egg separate, a half a cup of vegetable oil, three-fourths of a cup of sugar, a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and two tablespoons of Turkish raki. You will also need a pastry brush, a serving fork, two regular forks, a long thin knife, some parchment paper, a wet measuring cup, some dry measuring cups, some measuring spoons, a large bowl, a medium bowl, and a small bowl, some cooling racks, some oven mitts, and either a dough cover or some plastic wrap. And you will also need two large cooking sheets or baking trays because we're gonna be making 30 bizcochos, so you're gonna to wanna to space them out and you're gonna be able to fit about 15 on each of these large trays. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is add your three cups plus one tablespoon of all-purpose flour into your large bowl. Then grab your serving fork and two teaspoons of baking powder and you're going to sprinkle those right on top. Just make sure to get all of that in. And then once that's in, you're just going to grab your serving fork and you're going to incorporate the baking powder into the flour. Just Use the fork to combine the ingredients. You just wanna make sure you get the baking powder well distributed amongst the flour. So once those ingredients are well combined, what you're gonna do is measure out one tablespoon of your anise seeds. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a little bit of those anise seeds. You're gonna place them in the palm of your hand and you're gonna rub 
them because what you're doing is you want to release those oils so I just use my hands and I kind of rub my hands together to make sure that I'm releasing all of those lovely oils in the anise seeds and really just getting those flavors out before adding them into my flour mixture so as you see I washed my hands really well they're really dry and really clean and then I'm just using my hands to rub those oils out of the seeds and release all of those yummy flavors and that incredible fragrance. My kitchen is smelling amazing right now because by rubbing the seeds, I'm really releasing those oils, those flavors, and it's just gonna be beautiful and fragrant. So once you've added the seeds in, then you're just gonna use your fork to mix them in. You wanna make sure that they are really mixed in because you wanna make sure that every single bizcochito gets plenty of those seeds. Of course, you can add more or less of these seeds to your liking, but I think one tablespoon is just the perfect amount. So now you're gonna grab a medium-sized bowl and you're gonna grab three large eggs and you're going to crack those eggs into that medium bowl. And then once you have the three of them in, then just grab a fork and beat them well. You just wanna make sure you combine the yolk and the egg white, just beat them really well. So once you have your three eggs well beaten, then right into those eggs, you're gonna add three fourths of a cup of sugar and then you're just gonna use your fork to combine the ingredients. It's interesting how my grandmothers used to add the sugar into this wet mixture as opposed to into the dry mixture. So that's why I do it. If they did it that way, well, that's how I'm gonna do it too. So now you're gonna measure out a half a cup of vegetable oil and you're gonna add that in and then you're just gonna use your fork and stir that well. You just wanna combine those ingredients a bit. And then once you've combined them, then you're going to measure out a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. You're gonna add that in and once again, stir it into the mixture. And then we're gonna measure out two tablespoons of our raki. This is just enough to really infuse our bizcochos with that yummy anise flavor together with those anise seeds. It's going to be the perfect amount and it's going to also make our bizcochos crispy and golden. It really just does a beautiful number on our dough by adding this touch of alcohol to it not to mention the incredible flavor it adds. So then as you see, all I'm doing is combining all of those ingredients and then I'm gonna bring over my dry ingredients and then I'm just gonna grab this bowl with my wet ingredients, just make sure they're well incorporated and I'm gonna pour them right on top of my dry ingredients, scraping off all of that yumminess off the bowl. You wanna make sure not to leave any of that yumminess behind. I'm laughing because I sometimes have my friends quote the things that I say in my videos and that's one of the lines that often gets quoted. You don't want to leave any of that yumminess behind. So once all that yumminess is in, then once again I'm using my large fork, my serving fork, and I'm just going around and around and just mixing together the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. And you're gonna see by just rotating your bowl or just going around and around with your fork and using the sides of your fork to scrape down any dry flour that clings to your bowl, how quickly you're gonna form a beautiful dough. It's really going to come together so quickly, you're not going to believe it. I just love how these recipes that my grandmothers used to make didn't require any heavy equipment. Of course, these were invented many years ago when they didn't even have heavy kitchen equipment and they really just could make magic with some flour. Beautiful doughs for beautiful cookies, pastries, just so many delicious recipes. And they come together really quickly and really easily. All I'm using 
is the back and the sides of my fork and I'm just scraping down all of the flour. And then once I see that my dough has started to come together and I don't see a lot of flour left on my bowl, then I wipe off my fork and I switch to my hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the dough ball itself and my fingers to just remove any of that dough that is clinging to the bowl and just form a nice ball of dough. So if you've made my regular bizcochitos before, my bizcochos, the ones that I top with nonpareils or sesame seeds, you'll notice that this dough is slightly stickier, which is totally normal because of course we added the alcohol to this dough. So the texture is just a little different, but it'll still come together as a beautiful ball. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we do when I make my regular bizcochos. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover that dough ball and I'm gonna let it sit on my counter for a full hour. I wanna just let it sit. I can cover it with the cover or with some plastic wrap, but I'm gonna set a one hour timer to allow my dough to rest. And then of course I can line my two trays with some parchment paper so that they are ready once my dough has rested. So after that hour passes, it's time to preheat our oven. So I'm gonna be using my convection oven. So I'm going to be setting my oven to 350 degrees. I am not rapid preheating it. I'm not converting a recipe. I'm just gonna set it to 350 degrees on convection bake. But if you're using a still oven, if you don't have a convection option on your oven, that is totally fine. You would wanna set it to 375 degrees instead of 350 if you're using a still oven. So now it's been an hour. I'm gonna uncover my dough ball. It's looking beautiful. It's rested. And what I like to do is I like to separate my dough into 30 pieces so that I know that my bizcochos are all gonna come out similar in size. So what I do is I form these little dough balls before I shape my bizcochos to make sure that there are 30 of them. And then once I have shaped my balls and they're all pretty close in size, then I'll be ready to shape my bizcochitos one by one. So I'm gonna show you three different ways to shape your bizcochos. So I'm going to start with what I believe is the easiest way. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab one of your dough balls and then you're just gonna gently roll it between your hands or on a very clean counter. I always clean my counter with some antibacterial cleaner before I start filming any video. So my hands and counter are always impeccably clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently use my fingers and I'm going to make a long, thin rope and then I'm just gonna bring the two ends together and I'm going to form a circle. And then you can gently pinch your dough to bring it together so that the circle stays closed and then that's it all you're going to do is grab that beautiful bizcocho place it right on your prepared tray and it is ready to go this is by far the easiest of the three methods because really it's just rolled into a long log made into a circle and that's it it's ready to be baked so now i'm going to show you the second way to make a bizcocho i do the same i start in my hands and just kind of start to roll out my dough and when you're working with bizcocho dough, you wanna be gentle. I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just slightly adding a little pressure as I go so as not to break my dough. And then I just bring the dough together just like I did before with the first one. But then with this method, I'm going to give it a little extra fun, I guess you'd wanna call it, because this is one of the ways that my grandmothers used to make the bizcochos. So once they formed their circle, what they would do is they would grab their long, thin knife, and then they're gonna cut some slits into the bizcocho to just kind of give it some movement. It just really feels like it's got some movement going on. It's actually very cute once it bakes up, 
And I don't know what it reminds me of. It's just a circular motion and it just looks like you could almost toss it across the room and it would fly. It's just absolutely adorable. So I'll show you all three once I make the third option. So this one is actually my favorite. It starts the same as the other two. And the difference here is that I'm gonna roll this one out longer. So I'm gonna do the same process, start it the same way, but then when I place it on my counter, I'm just gonna continue rolling it very gently until the rope becomes longer because I almost wanna make it double the length of what I did with the other two biscochos because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to form two parallel lines almost, like a U, and then I'm going to cross the dough over onto itself and I'm going to make somewhat of a twist. I absolutely love the way the bizcochitos look when you make them this way. They're just so pretty. I know they take just a touch more effort, but they're so adorable. And talk about having movement. They look absolutely beautiful. They just look like this beautiful little spiral, this little swirl. So here are the three options, just your circle, the one with the slits, and the twist. So you can use any option you'd like. They're all perfectly acceptable. They're gonna taste absolutely delicious no matter what shape you choose to use. Now I'm going to continue to make my bizcochos and I'm gonna make them all in that third option because as I said, it's my favorite. So <laughs> I tend to stick with what I absolutely love. So I'm gonna show you that one one more time just because that one is just slightly more intricate than the other two. And as you watch me roll this one out, I'll take advantage of the opportunity to tell you that if your dough splits when you are rolling it out, then you know what? You can just grab it and make another dough ball and start over or just pinch the dough together and just stick it back together. This is a very easy, wonderful dough to work with. It's just really, it's like playing with Play-Doh. It's just so much fun, <laughs> in my personal opinion, to make these bizcochos. They're beautiful and it's really playing with your food. <laughs> They're absolutely gorgeous. And look at just how cute these beautiful twisted ones are. They're just absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just form all of my bizcochitos this way because this is how. I love to make them and I'm going to place 15 of them on my first tray and then once I form those first 15 and tell me those don't look absolutely gorgeous I'm gonna crack one large egg into a small bowl I'm gonna beat that egg well and I'm gonna use that egg for an egg wash I'm not adding any water or anything to it. I'm gonna use it straight up, the whole egg, and then I'm just gonna grab my pastry brush and I'm gonna gently give each of these beautiful bizcochos a little brushing of this egg. And it's just gonna help my bizcochos get golden and just this incredible, beautiful color. They're just beautiful. They end up shiny, golden, and you're just gonna love the results. They're really, really super beautiful. So do not skip this step. So now we're gonna save this for our second tray because we're gonna want to brush those two. And let me just show you one more time what these guys look like. They're gorgeous. I'm not gonna top them with anything else. I'm just gonna pop them right into my oven and I'm going to set a 19 minute timer, but you may want to do 17 minutes. Every oven runs differently. And I know my oven has some hot spots. I probably could have done 17 or 18 and then watch them for a bit at the end. So just play with that time. It'll be between 17 and 19 minutes. And then while those are baking, of course, I'm going to take advantage of the time and I'm just going to continue to shape my bizcochos. I'm going to make my second tray while my first tray is baking to take advantage of the time. And just like I did before, 
I'm going to make 15 more and place those on a second tray. So now my first batch of 15 is ready and I have carefully pulled them out of the oven and they're smelling so good. And that second batch is ready for their egg wash and I'm gonna bake those two and I'm gonna have 30 gorgeous bizcochos. Look at these guys, they really look amazing. So I'm gonna let those sit on the tray just for a minute or two just to let them firm up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give these guys an egg wash and then i'm going to pop these into the oven before removing the other ones from their hot tray and now i've given them all an egg wash and just like before they're going on a center rack i'm setting my timer again 17 to 19 minutes is what it will take and then carefully i'm going to remove the first batch from the tray and i'm going to place them onto a cooling rack you can use a spatula of course but if you're careful they're not too hot you can just remove them place them on a cooling rack and i'm telling you the smell is intoxicating that raki and those anise seeds wow not to mention that touch of vanilla they're just such an amazing cookie i know you're gonna love these so the timer has gone off my second batch is ready and i've just pulled them out of the oven and as i said the smell is enough to make anyone nuts people are gonna flock to the kitchen wondering what is happening there because the smell is just fantastic and these little bizcochos are so good everybody loves these these are perfect for any occasion because they're really not hard to make at all and they're so yummy and they're special because they're homemade and they're just really fantastic i can't say enough about them they're so so good can you tell i absolutely love these and my mom is a huge fan of the ones with raki the ones with anise seeds she absolutely loves these. They're really her favorite. So now I've let those sit for a minute or two on the tray and I am carefully removing them and adding them onto the cooling rack. And all they'll need is a few minutes to cool down just a bit so that you're able to handle them and eat them. They're going to be so crazy good. <laughs> look at how beautiful they look. I just love them. They have this beautiful golden color and they're just crispy but the perfect texture on the inside they're just absolutely perfect so once you let them sit for a few minutes and they've cooled down then you can place these onto a serving platter or anywhere you want to be able to access them because everyone is going to want to come at them <laughs> so what i like to do is on the day i prepare them once they've cooled down i place them on a pretty platter and just leave them on the counter and let people come around and just grab them as they choose and then of course they're so pretty you would want to serve these on a table for guests or really for any occasion they're just so great you can make these at any time and they come together so quickly and easily they're really no effort at all and the result is just absolutely fantastic i absolutely love these guys so as you see i let them cool i place them on a platter and now enough of the admiring it's time for me to try them i'm gonna grab one of these beautiful golden twisty ones <laughs> because as i said that's my favorite shape but of course i'm not going to pretend that these are not also gorgeous this one got a little toasty because on the sides of my oven it gets extra hot so the ones on the edge of the pan always get a little toastier than the rest but it's okay i don't mind them toasty at all they're absolutely perfect and on the inside they're perfect and they're golden and that's just that beautiful sheen that shine they get from that egg wash that we put on top they're just perfect so now i am going to start with this one it's beautiful you see the texture is just perfect and it smells so good mm so crazy crazy yummy the texture is absolutely perfect it's just crispy enough 
See, it's a little hard when you break it, but on the inside, it's still just absolutely perfect. It's not dry at all. It's just got an incredible texture and that flavor is just beyond. You see those seeds running throughout? Mm. It's so crazy good. <laughs> it's just a delicious cookie for any occasion. It was infused by that raki and those anise seeds. It's just perfect. Look at how golden and shiny it is from that egg wash. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> I just cannot get enough of it. I don't know why I keep putting the rest of these pieces down, pretty much just to show you what the cookie looks like as I eat it. <laughs> because I have no doubt I am going to finish this guy because it is so crazy good. The flavor is perfect. The addition of that raki, those anise seeds, just a beautiful variation to your classic Sephardic bizcocho. So, so good. Mm, so good. And of course, once they're completely cooled down, then you can store them on your counter in an airtight container and continue to indulge over the next few days if they last that long <laughs> because i'm telling you they're so good people are going to want to flock to your kitchen to try these they're absolutely amazing so how crazy gorgeous do these guys look they're just absolutely adorable they're perfect. They're the perfect consistency. They're just somewhat golden and just slightly crispy, although they're much more crispy on the outside. And then on the inside, they're still just absolutely perfect. They're fragrant. That anise, that anise that runs throughout is just absolutely perfect. And you can control how much anise you add. If you like a really big kick, then you add more anise. And if you prefer to go a little more subtle, then you can cut back on the seeds. You can play with it however you want, but however you do make them, you're gonna love these delicious bizcochos de raqui. Trust me, no, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make these delicious bizcochos yourself. Mm, they smell so crazy good. I'm holding back from eating yet another one. And of course, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to give it a little like, write a sweet comment, share it with your friends. And of course, remember to explore. My channel has so many recipe videos already up. I've got way over 100 at this point. You can explore under the column that is titled videos or the one that says playlists where things are broken down into categories and you're going to find so many yummy things there that I know you're going to love. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already to Sally That Girl in the Kitchen here on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and to touch that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I put up a new recipe, which I'm doing all of the time. And of course, if you're not following me on social media, you can follow me as Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on Facebook, Instagram, and on Pinterest. And you can find me as Sally That Girl FL on Twitter, Snapchat, and on TikTok. This way, if you wanna send me a little message, you can always reach me. If you have a question or a comment about a recipe that you're making, then you can send me a message through Facebook and Instagram. So any question you may have, you can always reach me through there. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's recipe and I'll see you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.